Good morning, everyone. Today we'll be talking about the moment distribution method and we will understand together what is the meaning of the moment distribution method and how to apply it to analyze indeterminate beams, frames. Uh, also frames can be without side this way or with side this way frames. So let's go through this introduction to this method together. The method was developed by Hardy Cross in 1930 and it attracted immediate attention because it was simple in theory and applications. Okay, how it works is that method. To understand the idea or the concept of uh, this method, let's uh, have a beam. This beam is, uh, as you can see, is fixed at A, fixed at support C, and we have at uh, intermediate support here at B. It could be pin or ruler support. Okay, if we applied these loads on the beams, uh, the beam will deflect under loads. It can take the following shape. As the support A and C, because they are fixed supports, there will no, uh, not be any rotation. However, at support B, because assuming that we have bigger loads at span BC, it will take this deflection, deflected shape, and we'll have a rotation here, and this rotation, uh, we will call it theta B. So under loads, this will be the real shape of the deflected shape of the beam. We have some rotation here. This rotation is called theta B. Okay, the moment distribution method is saying what? Let's assume that we have an imaginary clamp uh, is placed at B. So it will fix joint B and will not allow it for any rotation under the loads. If we fix it, this joint, how it will be the deflected shape? The deflected shape will be like that. And in this case, the theta B will be equal to zero, okay? If it is like that, it means we can divide the beam into two spans, span AB, because we have, we locked this joint and there is no rotation, we can assume this will be fixed. So it will be in span AB will be fixed, span BC will be fixed. When you have a fixed, fixed support, you can get the moment due to loads and these loads are called fixed end moments. So we can do that. We'll divide the beam into two parts span AB, and we will have under this load, you have fixed end moments, okay? And let's use a laser pointer here. These are the fixed end moment. We can get them from the fixed end moment table. And then span BC also, you will have fixed end moments. We can get them from the fixed end moment table based on this loading, if they are concentrated load one or two or uniform load. Okay, then it means at joint B, you have from left and right, you have two different fixed end moments, okay? So the resultant of these moments will be like called unbalanced moment because the MBA is not equal to MBC uh, and there will be unbalanced moment. So the idea is saying what? For this joint to be in equilibrium, we need a counter unbalancing moment opposite to that moment or resisting moment we need to apply it at this joint. So we have to apply a moment equal to the unbalanced moment, but to the opposite direction. Okay, if we applied a moment here, we will allow the joint again to rotate. Okay, but we need to apply that moment to the joint so it will have some effect or it will be divided between the two spans. So it will be part on this right span and part on the left span. Okay, how to divide this? joint moment into two different moments, we can do that using something called distribution factors. What are the distribution factors and how to get them? Just follow uh, the video and you will, we will see together how to calculate this distribution factor. Okay, this is the end? No, this is not the end. If you applied a moment at one end of a beam, which is let's say the right one here, if you applied a moment at one side, it will affect the other side also. So this will result in, this moment will result in some other moment here, okay? And it will be in the same direction as the original moment. Again, the left moment that we calculated here, also it will affect or it will result in some other moment at the other outer side. How we get this moment compared to the initial moment here? Okay, we get them using something called carryover factors, okay? What is the carryover factor? How to calculate the carryover factor? We will see also within this video. So the idea here, you calculate fixed end moments, then from the fixed end moment, left and right, we get something called balanced, unbalanced moment, then we get 
counter or opposite to that unbalanced moment, we distribute it between the two spans at the joint left and right. And this is why we call it, it is moment distribution. So we distribute the moment. And then from the moment that we result here, we have something called carryover that would affect the other ends of the beams. Okay, so what is the distribution factor? What is the fixed end the moment? What is the carryover? Okay, let's see together. To do that, let's see first the sign convention that we have to follow when we solve a problem with the moment distribution method. Okay, the sign convention would assume that if the moment is rotating clockwise rotation, as we can see here, MBA and MAB, both of them are clockwise rotation. If the moment is clockwise rotation, will be assumed as a positive moment, okay? If it is counterclockwise, it will be assumed as a negative moment. So within the moment distribution, we are going to follow this sign convention. Clockwise rotation will be assumed as positive, counterclockwise rotation will be assumed as negative, okay? What are the fixed end the moment? These fixed end the moment, we can get them from a fixed end the moment table for different loading cases and also different support conditions. Usually you will have two different support conditions. If you have the span is fixed, fixed, or if you have the span is fixed from one side and pin or ruler from the other side. And based on the load, that you have could, could be concentrated load at the middle or concentrated load not exactly at the middle to concentrated load and many other types of loading including uniform load triangle load and so on even settlement of support yes we can calculate some fixed in the moment using a displacement and also by following the videos you will learn how to solve a moment distribution problem uh, 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 affected by some settlement of supports Okay, so these are the values of the fixed end the moment. Okay, for example, if we take a concentrated load on a span L exactly at the middle, it will result in counterclockwise rotation fixed end the moment at the left side with a value PL over 8. And on the right side, it will be PL over 8, but it is clockwise. Here in the fixed end the moment table, there is no sign. But when we apply this uh, into a problem with a distribution factor problem, you should know that clockwise rotation, you will assume it as positive. If you have counterclockwise rotation like the fixed in the moment AB, you will assume it as a negative value and so on. Based on the type of loading, you will have different values. If you have a case when you have fixed from one side and ruler from one side, of course, in this case, you have a fixed in the moment at the, at the fixed side because the ruler or pin support will not take uh, any moment. So it will be only one moment from one side and you can get it from the following equation. Let's say if you have a case of concentrated load of a value P exactly at the middle, this will result in a fixed in the moment 3 PL over 16 and so on. So fixed in the moments can be, uh, we can get them easily from the fixed in the moment table. Okay, let's take uh, a short example about that. If you have a beam with a span 10 meters under concentrated load of 800 Newton exactly at the middle. So this will result in some fixed in the moment AB from the left side and BA from the right side. Okay, how much uh, is the fixed in the moment MBAB and BA? Let's see. From the fixed in the moment table, the value here, it was PL over 8 from left and right. So if we apply P as 800 Newton, the L is 10 meter divided by eight, this will result in a fixed in the moment of 1000 Newton uh, meter. And in this case, the fixed in the moment on the left side, which is MAB, will be a negative value because this is counterclockwise rotation. So according to the sign convention, counterclockwise rotation will be a negative moment. Uh, and on the other side, MBA, it is clockwise rotation, so it will be plus 1,000 Newton uh, meter. And this is according to the sign convention of the uh, moment distribution method. What is the member stiffness factor? We need to calculate something called member stiffness factor because we will use this member stiffness factor to get the distribution factors that we need uh, to distribute the moment between the uh, elements uh, at any joint. Okay, so what is the member stiffness factor? Let's assume that you have a beam here fixed at the outer end and at this end it has been support. And let's say we apply a moment here. This moment is a clockwise rotation or a positive moment called 
M capital, okay? So if you apply a moment at this beam, the beam will deflect and will take this shape, and then we will have a rotation here. This rotation uh, angle will call theta at A. At the other end, it will result in some moment. We will call it M dash, okay? It has a relation to the M as we are going to see together. Okay, so this M here, we can get the M here, a relation between the moment and the uh, rotation. The M equals 4 EI over L times theta A, which is the rotation. And this equation is if the far end here is fixed in support. Okay, so the moment at one end will result in a rotation, and this rotation is related to the moment using this equation for EI over L times theta A. So what is the stiffness factor? Uh, the stiffness factor here at A is defined as the moment, the amount of moment required to rotate the end A of the beam, theta A of one radian. So if the theta A that we got from the previous slide here is one, okay? So the moment that will result in a rotation equals to one, this we call it the stiffness factor. So the stiffness factor is the moment that will result in a rotation equals to one. So we can say the stiffness factor equals four EI over L because theta equals to one radian. We can just remove it from the equation. And this will be the fix the member stiffness factor. In a case, if you have a beam with far end is fixed uh, support. Okay, if this far end is pin or ruler support, we will have some modification of the stiffness factors and we are going to see it together. Okay, what is the joint stiffness factor? If you have a frame like this, you have three members, AD, AB, and AC. And let's assume that the stiffness of the first span is 1,000, then 4,000, and 5,000 for the vertical column AC. So if you want to get the joint stiffness factor, the joint stiffness factor equals the summation of the stiffness factors of all members connected to this joint. So the joint stiffness factor will be summation of the all stiffness factors of AD, AB, and AC. So get the summation and it will be like 10,000 kilonewton meters. So if you want to get the joint stiffness factor, you get the stiffness summation of the stiffness factor of the elements connected to that joint, okay? Then, this will lead us to the distribution factor, which is the important point that we need to uh, solve a moment distribution problem. Okay, let's assume that you have a frame like this and you apply a moment here. This moment is called M capital, okay? So how to distribute this moment between the three members? If you have a moment here with any value called M capital. So how to distribute the moment between the three members, AB, then AD, and AC? Okay, to do that, you need to get to distribution factor of each element here at this connection A. How to get the distribution factor? The distribution factor, we can get it from the stiffness of each member, okay, if you want to get the distribution factor at AD, at this joint here, it will be the stiffness of that member divided by the stiffness of the joint. So the stiffness, the distribution factor of AB will equal to KAB divided by the K of the joint. Okay, if we know this distribution factor, we'll be able to divide this moment between the joints. So if you have a moment here, okay, this is, Let's say the unbalanced moment, of course, we will need counter unbalancing moment and then distribute it between the joints. So this M here will equal to M1 plus M2 plus M3. How much is the M1 equals? Okay, the distribution factor of member AD multiplied by the original M that we have it here, we can get M1 and M2 and M3. What is the distribution factor? It equals to, K of the member, the stiffness of the member, divided by the stiffness of the joint, so it equals K divided by the summation of Ks, okay? This moment here should to equal to all other moments M1 plus M2 plus M3 to be in equilibrium, okay? So let's see here another example, the same previous example, if we have 
the k here equals 1,000, 4,000, and 5,000. And now, if we assume that we, uh, we want to calculate the distribution factor of at this joint here for member AD, for member AD, for member AC, how to do that? If you want to get the distribution factor of AB, it equals k of member AB divided by the k of the joint. So it will be 4,000 divided by the 10,000, which is the stiffness factor of the whole joint. This will give you a value of 0.4. Then repeating that at member AC or this column here. So again, it will be the stiffness factor of AC, which is 5,000 divided by the 10,000, which is the submission of the all stiffness factors or the stiffness factor of the joint. So it will give us a 0.5. And by repeating this for the third member, it will be 0.1. There is an important point here. What is that? Is the submission of the stiffness, the distribution factor at the joints will be equal to one. Okay, you need to distribute the moment. So it is a ratio. If this one will take 40%, 50%, the remaining will be 10%. So the submission of all distribution factors should be equals to one. Let's say if you have a moment here equal 2000 Newton meter at joint A, and what is required, find out the resisting moments or the opposite moment to that one that will be distributed at all or each member at this joint, okay? So again, to do that, we need to get the distribution factor of all members. We did that in the previous slide and we found that distribution factor AB was 0.4, distribution factor AC was 0.5, distribution factor AD was 0.1. So if you want to get the moment at AB, moment AC, moment AD, just multiply that one by the distribution factor. So 2000 multiplied by 0.4, it will give you 800. Then 2000 multiplied by 0.5, it will be 1000. And again, it will be 200. And we can see here, if this is the unbalanced moment, the resisting moment will be opposite to the unbalanced moment. And it will be based on the distribution factors that we already calculated, okay? So we learned now what is the fixed in the moment, what is the distribution factor. The remaining part is the carryover factor. Carryover factor, again, what is the carryover factor? If you apply a moment here, it will result in some rotation, and also it will result in some moment at the far end. If this far end of, is fixed, it will result in some moment here, we'll call the M dash. What is the relation of this M dash compared to the original moment that we applied here? the M dash equals 50% of the original M. So M dash equals 0.5 M, and this in case of the beam, if the far end here is fixed. But if you have a case that you apply a moment at one end and the far end is been a ruler support, of course, in this case, the carryover factor will be zero and there is no moment at the end or pin support. But in case of a beam with a far end is fixed, the carryover will be taken as 0.5 and this M dash will be with the same sign as the original M. If this is positive, this will be positive. If this one is negative, the other one will be also negative, okay? So we have a special cases here, let's see together. If you have uh, an end span like this and the far end is pin or ruler support, how much is the stiffness factor? The original case when you have a far end is fixed or fixed, fixed, it was four EI over L. But for a special case when the far end is pin or ruler support, there is a special stiffness factor called the 3 EI over L. So instead of 4 EI over L, for that special case, it will be 3 EI over L. How about the carryover? Also the carryover, if you apply a moment at one end and the far end is pin or ruler support, the carryover in this case will equal to zero. So you have a special case if the far end is pin or ruler support, the K is three EI over L, the carryover equals to zero. So don't ever take some carryover from to a, a pin support because this will result in some moment at the pin support and this will be of course a mistake. So the M dash here equals to zero. This means there is no carryover for the pin or a roller support, okay? Then also distribution factors, we have two special cases. If you have a fixed end, okay, a fixed end, how much is the distribution factor of a fixed end? We said from the definition of the distribution factor, it equals to the distribution factor of the span divided by the distribution factor of the joint. 
For a fixed joint here, it is totally fixed. So the, the stiffness of the joint will be infinity, okay? So if you want to get the distribution factor of AB at this fixed end, that will be KAB of that span divided by the K of the joint, which is infinity. So this will result in a fixed end moment equal to a zero. So for a distribution factor of a fixed end is always will be zero. Opposite to that, we have a case of an end span with a ruler or pin support. So again, the distribution factor at this end, AB equals KAB divided by the K of the joint. The K of the joint, you have nothing here. It is allowed to rotate, so no stiffness from the other side. So it will be zero plus KAB. So in this case, it will be KAB divided by KAB, which is the stiffness of the joint. It will be equals to one. So keep in your mind here that for the distribution factor of a fixed end, it will be zero. Distribution factor for a pin or ruler end support, it will be equals to one. Any intermediate support, okay, if you have a continuous beam over an intermediate support, in this case, you have to calculate it left and right based on the K divided by the K of the joint. So let's conclude our work here. What is the procedure of analysis of uh, any problem of moment distribution, we have to follow some steps. The first step is to calculate the fixed end moment. This fixed end moment, as I explained, can be calculated from the fixed end moment tables. Then we have to calculate the stiffness factors, which we called it K. And the K, as I explained, it could be 4EI over L if you have fixed, fixed. If you have uh, fixed pin or ruler, it will be 3EI over L then we can calculate the distribution factors. So this will be the first step. Second step, at each joint, we have to find the unbalanced moment that are coming from the fixed end moments for each span. We get this unbalanced moment, and then we get the opposite to that or counter unbalancing moment. So if this unbalancing moment is a positive, the counter will be uh, negative and vice versa. Then you have this resisting moment or counter unbalancing moment. We have to distribute that moment, okay, uh, between different members at the joint. And how to do that using, we do that using the distribution factor that we calculated at the first step, okay. After distributing the moment using the distribution factor, we have to make some carryovers, the carry these moments in each span using the carryover factors. And as I explained, the carryover factor is equals always 2.5, uh, except in a case of you have an end span with pin or ruler support, just keep in mind that in this case, there is no carryover or the carryover will equal to zero. For step three and step four, we will repeat them. This carryover, we again distribute them again, and we make carryover distribution and carryover and with each step, the amount of carryover and distribution moment will reduce at a specific point. We can say that's enough. We reach it an accurate answer and we can stop. Then we get the submission of all moments to get the final moments. Thank you for watching. This will be the end of our first video. In our coming videos, we will learn together how to apply these steps numerically to uh, solve for beams, as you can see here. Uh, also, we will have some special cases of beams. We are going to apply this on frames with no side sway and also with frame with uh, side sway. Thank you for watching and looking forward to see you in another video. Goodbye.